My name is David Longry. I am a civil engineer from UMR, and I'm with the group Engineers Without Borders. Currently, we are in Rio, Colorado, which is in the Amazon, doing what Engineers Without Borders does. It takes engineering students and puts them into third world countries to utilize engineering skills that we learn in the classroom. We also had professional engineers, such as Dave Shepherds, join us on the trip. This allows them to add their personal experience and expertise to the project. Right now, we are 45 miles from the nearest town on a rocky dirt road I'm at the school. And as we arrived and took a tour of the school and saw the facilities, we realized we need to develop some kind of infrastructure that will allow this school to provide water for uh, showers, bathing, washing clothes, doing the dishes. Right now, there are two hand dug wells. They bail the water out using buckets and pour the water on them. That's their shower facility. They're covered with mold, and there's been signs of skin disease and problems that have occurred from this water. So we're gonna look at building a storage unit and then feeding 10 to 15 shower heads versus this well we've been looking at that has mold growing up the sides of it. This being a technical school where the administration is working very hard to make these students the top in Bolivia, where they have the education to go on to college, engineering and, or other professions. So they have a computer center uh, with 24 computers and some of our electrical guys are looking at ways of providing more electricity. Well, I think we can help them. Yeah. I'm sure we can help them. We'll help them. That's what we're here for. <laughs> Part of what we like to do is partner with the community and make sure they're wanting what we put in and they're willing to put up labor to construct the project as well as maintain it and it's a usable thing. Last year, I was part of a team that went on a site assessment to a, another part of Bolivia called Inkakatarapi. Now, Inkakatarapi is much different than the background you see behind me. Inkakatarapi, we're on what's called the Antiplano, which is high up in the Andes Mountains, about 12,300 feet in elevation. Last year, we went there um, with the idea to produce water and clean water supply and allow water for all of the homes. Well, when we got there, we realized that they have a basic water system already in place. So as we began to talk with the village leaders, they needed bathrooms. We went through the entire village of 500 people and there's not a single bathroom. Since these children especially run around without shoes on, which we believe is one of the leading causes of their illnesses, uh, we brought that information back to the United States and over the past year we've been designing self-composting latrines made of local material and a system that is maintainable by the local people. Most of us here speak the Aymara language. And so this is a hygienic cleaning for us to have these latrines here. People come from all over. You, you see the children who walk around on, on a, a rock floor and a dirt floor of their home who have no shoes. Um, one, maybe two pairs of clothing that they have to wear, but then you also see, you know, how happy they are and satisfied with what little they do have, and I think their parents want them to, to have better so that they can live longer. I mean, the infant mortality rate is 100 to 200 babies every year, and you know, it, it hurts them as much as it would hurt for us to lose our children. So I think as a student, you get to see real life problems using what you do learn in school. Everything we've done this week, we've learned in our classrooms and now we get to apply it. You really understand how much this means to people and you can really feel it in your heart how much you are helping them. And we're not coming down here and just building these things for them. We're working with them and, and teaching them so that they can continue while we're gone. From a professional engineer, 
standpoint, I think it's a great opportunity for them to get involved. You're able to maybe step back in your professional life and understand, you know, these people are happy with going to the bathroom in a, a latrine like you'd find in our national forest, not even that nice. And they're ecstatic that we're down here putting that in. So I feel that Engineers Without Borders can help everybody improve their engineering skills, maybe step back a little bit and realize how lucky we are to, to live in the United States.